In this new tutorial, we will configure a subwoofer array. So that way later, we can apply delay to build an electronic arc. We will use the image that we have in the background, where we have a stage and an audience zone that needs to be covered properly. The first thing we do is select the system that we want to use. Then we select the configuration, subwoofer array. Inside subwoofer array, we will be using the UX-18A. The default setting when inserting a system in East Focus 3 is 5 units. To see it in a way more graphical, we can use a selection plane. With the selection plane selected, in the side view, we can see the array from the front. Next, we will configure the subarray. In box count, under the configuration window, select 12 units. With selection plane selected, we can visualize the subarray. Now we will add another sub to each stack. In the configuration window, under the drop down menu of stack boxes, select two units. We have configured a subarray of 12 stacks with two subs per stack. The next thing we're going to do is to space out the subs to get a better coverage. We can do this in two ways. First, we'll find the width of the array. In this example, it's 20 meters. Then we mark the distance of center to center of each sub, in this case, two meters. After placing the spacing between the subs, the software will indicate the approximate frequency limit of the array, in this case, 85 Hertz. By default, Ease Focus 3 gives a coverage angle of 77 degrees. The first thing we're going to do is remove the coverage angle. Now we can see that all the subs in the array have a delay of zero. Let's turn on the mapping and see how the subarray works without any delay. We can see that the majority of the energy is in the center of the audience area compared to the sides. To see the different levels of different points, we will use the frequency response window. We will insert three microphones. The first mic blue on axis in the center of the audience area. The second mic green in the middle of one of the sides and the third mic green at the end of one side. It is important that all the mics are the same distance as the first mic. Now we can use the frequency response window to see the different levels. 112 dBs for the blue mic, 104 dBs for the green mic, and 100 dBs for the red mic. The difference from the center to the edge is about 12 dBs. Now we can start changing the coverage angle to see how the three points start to even out. With 35 degrees, the difference between the blue mic in the center and the red mic at the edge is no longer 12 dBs. It's now about 4 dBs of difference. With 16 degrees, we have a difference of 12 dBs. And with 35 degrees, we have a difference of about 4 dBs. Let's turn on the mapping to see how the electronic arc works with a coverage angle of 35 degrees over 50 Hertz. 
we can see that the energy is more evenly distributed. The difference between the center and the sides is very similar. In the configuration window, we can see the delay times of each stack. 7.6 milliseconds on the outside subs, 4.1, 1.9, 0.7, 0.1, and 0 milliseconds on the center stacks of subs. Lastly, we will show an example of a cardioid line of subs. We will change this line of subs to one sub per stack. And we will duplicate it by copying and pasting it. Next, we will rotate 180 degrees And from the side view, we will stack them one on top of the other. On the line of subs facing the rear, we will select the preset cardioid two units in the input configuration window. Now we can turn on the mapping and see how the cardioid configuration works. We see how we can control the energy in the audience zone while reducing the energy in the rear. We can also change the coverage angles. In this case, we need to apply the same value to both lines of subs, so we can keep the electronic arc and the cardioid configuration working properly.